The Nintendo 3DS and 2DS are great for retro gaming, but the old versions with their slower processors can struggle to run some emulators. But using the system's built-in DS compatibility, we can very easily get around this limitation. So let me show you how. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The Nintendo 3DS and its smaller brother the 2DS are great handheld consoles with fantastic homebrew potential via a simple software hack. Now if you've been following my channel you might have seen my 3DS homebrew setup videos and in these I showed you how to install homebrew, how to get Nintendo DS games running at full speed and finally how to turn your console into a retro gaming handheld. But the 3DS and 2DS came in two main variants. So we have the, the old version 3DS, which, which I have here, and the new version. Now the new version has a more powerful processor and is therefore able to handle retro console emulation much better than this old version. So I was a bit disappointed with the gaming potential of, of the old version and I wanted to make sure that we got full speed Game Boy Advance along with full speed 16-bit consoles such as the Nintendo Super NES and the Sega Mega Drive. So in this video that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to achieve. In my DS gaming video we used a homebrew application called Twilight Menu Plus Plus. This allowed us to use the built-in DS compatibility that's part of the hardware in every 3DS and 2DS. Now this worked great and we were able to play basically any DS game you can find. But 3DS and 2DS are also supposed to be hardware compatible with the Game Boy Advance. In my retro emulation video I installed the MGBA emulator which works great on new models but was unplayable on my old version. Now this is because the MGBA emulator is actually emulating, as the name says, it's emulating the Game Boy Advance in software and it's not using the compatible hardware. So there had to be a way around this. And Twilight Menu is the answer. Now I've covered the full installation of Twilight Menu in my DS gaming video and I'll put a link to that in the description down below. But in brief, you need to use the Universal Updater app that we installed as part of the initial hack to download and install the Twilight Menu app. Just find it inside the list of available titles and click to install it. Once it's installed, boot up the application and it will run a series of setup tasks before dropping you into the main launcher screen. Now one thing that I hadn't really acknowledged at the time was that part of the installation process is not only to install the DS game launcher but also something called GBA Runner 2 which allows you to launch Game Boy Advance titles as native games and that's exactly what we want. So on top of this it also installs a few very well optimised retro system emulators which we're going to have a look at in a while. So to start let's first get a few things ready on our system so that we can test out the gaming potential of Twilight Menu++. So make sure that you install Twilight Menu and then pop the SD card back inside your PC. So open up your SD card and you should find there's a few folders added by it. One of those is the ROMs folder. So if we have a look inside that, you'll see that it's created a, a subfolder then for each of the systems that it's going to emulate. And if you mouse over them, um, on one Windows at least, you'll find that it does have a little it does have a file inside there which tells you which systems to place in each folder. So our A26 folder is for our Atari 2600 ROMs and, and so on. And you'll see here um, the, the GB folder is actually for Game Boy, Game Boy Color uh, and the Super Game Boy ROMs. So we need to now get some game files together. So I've, I've created a small collection of files over here and basically all I've done is I've mimicked the same folder names. Okay, I've, I've got a couple of extra ones here which aren't part of Twilight Menu. Um, but if I go inside this A26 folder, you should find we now have a, an Atari 2600 ROM in here. Now these ROMs do need to be extracted ROMs, so don't put them inside zip files 
or anything like that. Just have the actual ROM files out, out in the open in effect. And you can see, uh, same here for my Atari 7800 and so on. Uh, my Game Boy ROMs here, um, these are a mixture of Game Boy ROMs and Game Boy Color ROMs. They all go into the same folder. And then, of course, my Game Boy Advance ROMs are, are sitting in here as GBA files. So let's go and have a look at how we can then put those all on. Um, and, and basically, all we have to do to get these um, games installed onto the SD card is you just simply copy them across into the correct folders. So I'm just going to highlight my folders here because as I'm using the same names, then, of course, as I copy them across, they will all go into the same folders. Uh, so that's that. Like so let's just get those, copy them across into here. So if I now have a look inside these folders, I should find I now have my game ROMs in the correct folders. Okay. So there's one last thing we need to do with the Twilight menu. So when we want to run our Game Boy Advanced ROMs, it is going to need a BIOS file. And that BIOS file needs to go, so on my SD card, in this underscore GBA folder that is created, inside there we need to have a file called BIOS.bin, which is the Game Boy Advance BIOS. If we don't have that in there, um, some versions of Twilight Menu come with a a sort of open source version of it, but it isn't as compatible as it could be. So we need to go and find one of those. And the best way to do that is to find a Batocera BIOS pack, and you'll have to have a search online for that. If I open up that and go into the BIOS section, if we scroll down, we should find down here, um, when we get to the G section, we should find a Game Boy Advance BIOS. So we need to copy this file across onto our SD card and drop it into the underscore GBA folder. And I just need to rename this, and we're just going to take out the GBA at the front of it. And that should be everything ready now for us to go onto our console and try and play some games. So first, let's just get a little reminder of what sort of performance we were getting using the MGBA standalone emulator. And as you can both see and hear, this was really struggling to emulate the system on this older version 3DS. So back on our console with our SD card in place, we can start up Twilight Menu. And that should drop us into the last location we were looking at. So we do need to navigate through to our Game Boy Advance folder. So I'm just going back up here so I can get to my ROMs folder. You can see I'm now looking at all the different system folders. So if we go across to GBA and open that, you can now see that we have a number of our game ROMs sitting in there. Uh, so to start that, we just simply select the one we want. And that should launch our Game Boy Advance game. And that will do it using a system called GBA Runner 2. And there we have our game coming up. And we should now be able to just go straight in and start playing our Game Boy Advance game. So the great thing about this method is we are now playing it using the built-in support in our 3DS. So we're actually getting full speed on our Game Boy Advance. So if you compare this to what we had using our MBGBA emulator, again on, on my older 3DS here, um, we, we, we were getting really bad frame rates and the sound all breaking up. But here, of course, we are now playing it at native speed and everything is working absolutely as it should. So we now have got full support for Game Boy Advance on our older version 3DS. And of course, this will obviously work just as well on a new model 3DS or 2DS. Now while you're playing a game, if you want you can touch the um, bottom screen and that will bring up the GBA Runner 2 menu. And as you can see from there, we can either reset the game or we can quit out of it and go back to the ROM selection menu. So now that we've got our Game Boy Advance running at full speed, even on our old version 3DS, let's have a look and see if we can improve the performance in some other consoles. So we previously installed some standalone emulators for the Nintendo Entertainment System, so, so the NES and the Super NES. And both of those worked absolutely fine and ran at full speed, even on this old version. But um, we do have alternatives then inside the Twilight menu. 
And again, as you can see here, both of those, again, work at full speed. So it gives you a bit of a choice as to which one you want to use. So let's move across to the Sega consoles and see what sort of emulation we get on the Mega Drive. So first off again, let's remind ourselves what sort of performance we were getting using the RetroArch um, Mega Drive emulator. And as you can see here, it, it really is unplayable. Again, both slow down on the animations and the sound is terrible. So let's jump across onto our Twilight menu and we're going to then navigate across to our um, Genesis or, or, or Mega Drive folder here. We find a game, so we'll play the same game Vector Man, and, and you can see here once it comes up, it's it's well perfect. Um, we are running at full speed. The game is absolutely playable. There's no slowdowns. And, and Vector Man is actually one of the harder games to emulate on the Mega Drive. So we now have added Mega Drive emulation to our old version 3DS. And of course if you're on a, a new version 3DS this will just make it um, just that bit more optimized. So of course, if we drop down to the Sega Master System, again, that being an 8-bit um, console, you can see, again, we're getting full speed emulation. So this Twilight menu is really um, letting us get access then to the 16-bit console range. But of course, um, it doesn't support all the consoles. So if you do want to play something like PlayStation 1, then you are going to need a new version 3DS. But we can have a look at some other emulators that are built in Twilight Menu. So it does have a full set of Atari 8-bit emulators. And you can see here we've got the 2600. And if we drop across them, we can of course play the Atari 7800 and, and the 5200 and games as well. So that pretty much wraps it up for this tutorial. Um, again, do have a look at Twilight Menu and its um, emulation capabilities. As I say, it will give you full speed DS and Game Boy Advance. And again, that's using the built-in hardware compatibility of all of your 3DS models. And then, of course, it um, then has, especially for our old version 3DS, some much more in, uh, optimized emulators, especially for the Mega Drive and those 16-bit consoles. So, I hope you find this useful. Um, please do make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel for more gaming, modding, electronics and coding tutorials. I look forward to seeing you again in another video and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.